Hey there! Today we're going to be making a mask, and no, I'm not talking about the kind that you're supposed to be wearing at the moment. Uh, no. We're going to be making a kitsune mask. The Japanese fox mask, also known as kitsune mask, is an iconic and beautiful prop rooted deep into Japanese culture as far back as the 14th century. This mask is often worn at festivals and just for fun. You can also see this mask being worn in different anime and video games. Anime such as Demon Slayer, Naruto, Into the Forest of Firefly's Light, and many many more. So that's what we're making today. Now, these masks come in two forms of either being a full face mask or a half mask. And we're gonna be making a half mask in this video. You can make one for cosplay or just for fun and to hang it up on your wall and appreciate it. Let's get into it! Part 1. Making the base Stuff you will need Open up your cereal box and cut it into one and a half centimeter strips. So first up, we're gonna use these to frame around the face. Now, my cereal box cardboard was a little stiff, so I slightly bent the strips over my thumbs and this made it easier for them to take shape for the round parts. You can test this on your face to make sure it's just the right size for you and readjust it if needed. Next up, we're gonna lay a strip horizontally over the nose area. This piece should lightly touch your nose as you wear it, so make sure to try it on and adjust it like before. And then we're gonna add a vertical strip down the center. Now I'm gonna try this on and bend the vertical strip on the upper half of the face, right where the bridge of my nose begins. We're gonna use this to form more realistic eye sockets. Use shorter and more curved pieces and lay them across the marked point. This is gonna be the eye socket, so try it on again to make sure they're at a comfortable distance from your eyes. Before moving on to the next steps, I decided to remove the tapes and replace them with hot glue. Doing this will give you a cleaner look, but it's totally optional. Now we're gonna lay vertical strips all over the face. We need to do this in two separate parts. I'm gonna use this line as a guide and start with the bottom half. As you can see, I'm curving these pieces inward because it's basically where the eyes will be. And then for the top half, we just lay the pieces normally and perhaps slightly curved outwards. Next step is to go over the whole mask with horizontal strips. Now sometimes longer strips don't bend well around the corners and create sharp edges on your mask. And the smoother you can make your base, the better. So don't forget to cut your strips into smaller pieces and shapes wherever you feel is necessary. And last step is to make the ears. Draw two triangle-like shapes, just as you would like the ears to look, and cut them out. Then, cut a slit halfway through the middle and use that to fold the ear over itself 
to make a nice curved shape. And then glue them onto your mask. Part 2. Paper mache. Stuff you will need. First, we need to make our paper mache glue. Put two parts glue and one part water in your cup and mix well. The consistency should be neither too sticky nor too watery. You may also use Mod Podge instead of this mixture since it's basically thinned PVA glue. Here are some other substitutes for PVA glue. And then cut or rip your newsprint into small strips. They don't really need to look identical or neat. Now use your brush or just your fingers to cover your mask with some glue and stick a piece of newsprint onto it. Use some more glue to coat on top of each piece to make sure all of it is soaked with glue. A different approach could be to just dip each piece in your glue and then place it on your mask. Press down hard on each part to avoid air bubbles and to get extra glue out from underneath. I found it easier to do so with my fingers and don't worry, it's not bad for your skin or anything. I covered my whole hand with five layers of this stuff in a previous video, so yeah. Cover all over your mask with paper mache just like this and then repeat again for two or three layers. After applying each layer, leave it to dry or speed it up by using a hairdryer and then start with the next layer. We're adding these more layers in order to make the surface smoother, so go over the places you think need that. Not to mention, it's gonna give us a pretty strong and sturdy mask, despite what it may look like. You'll see what I mean later. After you're done with that, you can cut those extra strips on the bottom half. I then drew a curved line on each side of the face and cut them off for a smoother look. Then, of course, I had to cover those parts that I cut with paper mache again. Now, of course, we need to give our mask more detailed features and I'm gonna start with the ears. To give the ears some volume, I thought of rolling up some paper and gluing them on like so, basically forming the frame of the ear the way I want it to look at the end. I then started folding small bits of paper and filling up the gap in between. As you can see, I'm using hot glue for these parts as it's much easier to work with compared to our paper mache glue. Feel free to cut or add more pieces of paper wherever you want to form it into the perfect shape. I guess the ears were the most challenging detail and now that it's over we've only got the forehead, nose and cheekbones to work on. I'm gonna go with the nose first and what you want to do is use hot glue to stick a small piece of folded paper where you want the tip of the nose to be and then use a layer of paper mache to smooth it over. Then keep doing that over and over until the nose has the height and shape that you like. If you feel like you don't have the patience for that, you can stack up the full length of the nose all in one step and then begin to smooth it over. I just thought maybe doing it this way would make it look smoother. Just make sure to take your time to merge and blend your nose into its surrounding areas 
nice and smoothly. Next up, I'm gonna work on the forehead and this one's pretty easy. I just used a few flat folded pieces to raise that area and then smoothed it over with paper mache. And lastly, it's time for the cheekbones. And it's basically done the same way as the forehead, only that you're gonna wanna add more pieces to raise it higher than you did with the forehead. Then I went back to the ears to cover them with paper mache since I forgot to do that before. Now besides just covering the uneven parts, I also used some pieces on the inside of the ear, laying them at an angle to raise the level and give it a nicer looking slope. Pro tip, when you're working with curved surfaces like this, it's best to use smaller pieces of paper, and wherever the paper doesn't lay flat, make a tear so that it doesn't wrinkle. Next up, it's time to cut out the eyes, and of course we need a template for that, so I'm just gonna draw this foxy eye shape on a piece of my cereal box and use it as my template. Place your template on your mask, making sure it aligns with your eyes, and trace around it. As you can see, mine also went a little over the cheekbones, and that's okay. Next step, get yourself a sharp cutter and start cutting out the eyes. It was at this point when I realized just how strong this mask is, because I really didn't expect some glue and thin paper to make the mask this sturdy. But of course, that's a good thing. If you plan on wearing the mask or adding decorations, now's the time to also cut some slits or holes on either side of the face too. And again, I'm gonna use paper mache to cover up the rough edges around the eye holes. And we are finally done with this step. I thought I'd give my mask a finishing coat with the rest of the glue mixture I had left. And don't do that. Don't, don't just pour it on. Use your fingers like before, please. Part 3. Painting and decorating. For this last step, you're gonna need acrylic paint or spray paint. I use the traditional colors of black, white, gold and red, but you can do it with any set of colors you like. First up, you need to paint all over your mask with your base color. If you do have spray paint, it can make your work much easier. Moving on to the designs, first I'm gonna draw my pattern on with a pencil. With a quick search on Google or Pinterest, you can find hundreds of designs to choose from. You can either make an exact copy of a design you like, or use them as inspiration to make your own. To make your work easier, I've made a Pinterest board of all the designs I liked and used for inspiration, and the link to that will be in the description. After drawing each little bit, you can color them in with your paint. 
Now, if you do have them, it's easier to use a brush with a smaller tip or maybe acrylic fine tip pens for the small details. And of course, you can just use your base color to cover and correct your mistakes. If you're planning on wearing your mask, you can use an elastic band, ribbons or strings for attaching it to your face. And for decorations, you can use anything from small bells to tassels and ribbons. I actually just wanted to put this on my wall, so I didn't need to add any of those. It's definitely that, and definitely not because I forgot to cut the slits while making this. And we're done! Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you make this, make sure to share a picture of it with me on my social media accounts. The link to those will be in the description. Like, subscribe, blah blah blah, and tell me in the comments what you thought of this. Okay, bye!